will it take 40 years to correct this injustice today? It's why it's so important that we stand up together, that we have a media that allows us to communicate to find out what's happening, going back still to World War II, that famous quote of the pastor Martin Niemöller, most of you know it, but it bears repeating. First they came for the communist, I wasn't a communist, so I didn't speak up. Then they came for the socialist, I wasn't a socialist, so I didn't speak up. Then they came for the trade unionist, I wasn't a trade unionist, so I didn't speak up. Then they came for the Jews and the Catholics, I was neither, so I didn't speak up. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak up. We have to stand together. He didn't say we have to agree with each other. But we have to stand together to make it harder to isolate, to target any individual or any individual population. There are ways to get information out and to use the corporate media to do it. We have to critique the corporate media and we have to build our own media infrastructure. And I see that folks are doing that with groups like the Louisville Media Reform Committee. Um, the fact that, um, is it called the Brick House? Brick Youth Group that is now applying for and has gotten a license to do low power from radio. These are fantastic ways to create our own media. But we can also affect the corporate media. I've been invited a number of times now on MSNBC's Hardball, an unusual experience. <laughs> I somehow have become their social security expert. No matter what they say I'm going to be on about, when I get there, it's about social security. <laughs> I was one time they said it's about the occupation, we'd like you to come on and read this San Francisco Chronicle uh, columnist, a very right-wing pundit's article on the war and why the troops should remain, and then you guys will be debated. It's a woman from the San Francisco Chronicle. So I said, fine, read it, got prepared, went over. I think she was probably as shocked as I was when they asked us about Social Security again. So she made this comment uh, that you know, it's a real disgrace the way old people burden young people today. I was listening, I thought, you know, I know all the facts and figures, you memorize them about Social Security, why it's not a crisis, and I can sort of go through them. But I think that makes people's eyes glaze over. And as I sat there listening, it's really a disgrace how old people burden young people. I was thinking, what? You know, how can I respond to this? I, I don't know what kind of relationship she has with her parents. And, <laughs> and so well, I, I, I quoted Gandhi, that quote, you know, when he was asked, what do you think of Western civilization? I think it's a good idea. Um, and I said, what kind of society do we want to live in? The next thing you'll be saying, as I see babies here, you know, I can't believe these barbaric babies, the way they burden their parents. <laughs> what is society or civilization if not for us to take care of each other? And <laughs> the last time I was on, they asked me to comment on the media coverage of the Terry Schiavo case, but now I was determined they would not frame the argument. We had just passed the second anniversary of the invasion. I was going to get in a comment about this. Um, what do I think of the media coverage of the Terry Schiavo case? It's a terrible personal tragedy, they said. Of course, and all too many of us may have to deal with it, no question. But when you look at the two weeks of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the protesters in front of the hospice, I'm not talking about the family. The protesters, this small group, it gave us the illusion that this is a deeply divided country on this issue. It wasn't. It isn't. The vast majority of the polls show of Americans, talking about 80 to 90 percent, were against the congressional intervention, were against President Bush flying back in the middle of the night in his pajamas to sign the legislation. <laughs> 80 to 90 percent 
more than 60% of evangelicals were opposed. It wasn't divided. I mean, did we learn about the fact that Tom DeLay, the man who led the charge, concerned about his own ethics charges and wanting to divert attention from them, that he in the late 80s with his brothers and his mother dealt with this himself? His father in a freak accident in their backyard in a coma, they decided to let him die. And that's his right, privacy, to make these painful decisions. Mr. Schindler, Terry's dad, made this decision for his own mother. She got pneumonia, and he felt she could not be sustained any longer. If we're going to get wall-to-wall -wall coverage, let us learn something. Instead, you had every time the small group of protesters led by Randall Terry of Operation Rescue, I used to cover him for years on the sidewalks of New York as he tried to prevent women from getting women's health care in clinics. Did we learn about his past? Instead, every time a small group went before the microphone, the networks would cut away from the regularly scheduled programs to bring in the press conference. So I said on MSNBC, let this be a model of media coverage of protest in this country. was the second anniversary of the invasion. I watched all of the network nightly newscasts that night. I mean, it's a painful job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> 800 protests, tens of thousands of people, from tiny little rallies to large marches across the country at Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Thousands, many of lost loved ones in Iraq, soldiers who were refusing to return to Iraq. Another huge story. And that new practice to the paperback, we read about the more than 5,500 U.S. military not going to Iraq. The Pentagon doesn't want to talk about this. Um, but these were stories to be told. Javier Coso, the brother of Jose Coso, you saw the Spanish cameraman from Telecinco TV who died when the U.S. military opened fire on the Palestine Hotel the day before the statue of Saddam Hussein came down. April 8, 2003, came to this country to call for an independent investigation which would protect all independent journalists for why so many have died in Iraq. He spoke in Central Park before thousands as well as many others. Why didn't we see any of these people interviewed? Not one protester interviewed. Late in the day on CNN, they said 4,000 protesters in Japan marched. Now this is encouraging, but we weren't talking about CNN International. We're talking about CNN Domestic. They didn't report on what was happening in their own backyard. We need a media that reflects reality. I don't like the whole reality TV craze, but we need a little reality TV when it comes to war. So, during the I heard you before, 1991, I was on WBAI, it was just after the news, and I was criticizing the bombing of the cradle of civilization back to the cradle. And it was during fundraising, and I encourage everyone to support your community radio stations and help out with fundraising, and a volunteer ran in and said, the Sal Jesse Raphael show is on the line. I said, oh yeah, right. She said, no, 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 and she kept coming back, and you know, Volunteers are the heart of everything we do. I just thought this volunteer was hallucinating. But anyway, she was so persistent that I said, okay, I'll pick up the phone. And sure enough, there was a producer from the Sal Jesse Raphael show. And she asked if I would come on the program in two days. They were going to tape the show on war, have women on for and against the war, and it would air two days later. And she said she was listening in her limousine. I guess her chauffeur had turned on the program. And, and I thought, oh my God. What am I going to wear? <laughs> the very important thing is we have to go with first. I mean, millions of people are going to see this. I can, you know, dress up as a man pretending to be a woman who is actually masquerading as a man who is actually a woman because I wanted to fit in. I didn't want to shock them. <laughs> anyway, I figured out what to wear and I went out down to the program. And they divided, there were three women for and against the war, and they put us in two different green rooms, the women for the war and against, six women. The other five, besides me, they were all military, three for and two others against. 
And a producer came out and said, I really want this program to work. I don't want you to meet until you go out on the stage. I want you to duke it out.